what's shaking. Finally picked up my Beretta APX. Yeah, I'm a bit of a fanboy. Hate all you want. I still love them. 500 years, one passion, right? Man, this case is a nice one compared to other Berettas. Like my PX4 came in a really cheap case, but these little clasps, they got a little trick to them. You actually do have to pull while pushing. But once you know the trick, it's uh, pretty simple, really. And there she is, standard black. I haven't seen any uh, olive drab in person lately. Well, yet, that is. I've seen them online, but, you know. Anyway, get the frame changed, and I'll get whatever color I want. But, uh, virtually. I'm leaning towards the sniper gray, or wolf gray, that is. She is a beaut, and she is unloaded. Even though I have a loaded mag. Chamber is clear. I'm still... Have a tendency to reach for a hammer because this is Beretta's first striker fire pistol. I've seen some videos saying it's hard to uh, disassemble, which is BS. It's just a little different. Comes with the uh, standard ink pair lock, back straps, small, large. It's got the medium, that's what it comes with. A spare mag. I wasn't lucky enough to get the. Uh, Free magazine, law enforcement version, I guess is what it's described as. Also comes with a brush, warranty information and whatnot up top, plus a manual with five languages in it. So, you know, some educational material there. English first, Italian, French, see Espanol, and Deutsch. Who knows, I might flip through those just for uh, shits and giggles. Well, let's get the uh, auxiliary parts out of the way so I can address the disassembly issue. Like all Berettas, it's really dirt simple, elegant really. The only difference that I'm not quite used to yet is having to pull the trigger or press the uh, striker deactivation button, which eh, I haven't done it like that yet because with a little bit of discipline, all you can do is check the chamber pull the trigger. My method differs slightly from a lot you'll see on YouTube because they say to press with the thumb while rotating down with your index finger, but it's so similar to a 92, I just treat it like a 92. The stiff spring is a little stiff on the takedown button, but man up and deal with it, man. Push with your index finger, then swing down with your thumb, just like a 92, and that's all there is to it. I wish they would have went with a, a different style locking mechanism to keep the barrel parallel with the rest of the gun, like previous Berettas, PX4, 92, Cougar. But, you know, this Browning lockup works pretty well, and haven't taken it to the range yet. But uh, from what I understand, it's quite a flat shooter. Sure, the recoil spring looks like Kristen Dunst's teeth, but, you know, in a way she's kind of cute, So and it works goes together just a simple line up the slide rack it hard the lever will pop up by itself simple as pie super comfortable in the hand first time I picked it up I fell in love and knew I was gonna get it initially the uh, slide serrations aesthetically I wasn't a real big fan but they definitely grow on you I like the uh, slash cut to the muzzle end there. Gives a little bit of that Italian flair. Standard three dot sights. Front sights pretty beefy. I see they've got some Trigicon night sights on the Beretta website and it probably won't be too long before I try to pick up a set of those because I mean they work. I've got them on my 92 and they just glow and glow and glow. You don't have to worry about them. Obviously you know you've seen uh, previous read a APX videos probably if you're watching this one ambidextrous slide lock release I haven't taken the uh, chassis out yet but who knows I'll probably get bored in a little bit here and uh, update this video <laughs> it's not over yet you know it's not uploaded either for that matter very happy with it I plan on going to the range tomorrow I might get some footage of that that would probably be the first range footage I've ever put on YouTube 
but uh, all in all, I'm very happy with it. It's, like I say, it grew, took a while to grow on me, but I think it's a beautiful gun. It definitely shows a little bit of craftsmanship behind it. So, I think I'll go ahead and finish this one up at this point before I start rambling on too much. Up the, uh, let me add something you may already know, the mag release is not ambidextrous but can be swapped over from side to side very similar to the PX4 and yeah like I say she's a looker took a little bit to uh, find the allure but once I found it once I held one on my hand that was all she wrote haven't been to the range yet but I would already highly recommend this to someone looking for a striker fire pistol this is my first striker fire pistol too, not only Beretta's, but my first. So I figure I'd stick with the uh, lineage. Okay, so I did a dry run for the chassis removal, and I think I might be able to get it on camera with my makeshift bipod, tripod thingy. Also going to show the alternate method of takedown using the striker deactivation switch located here, with the one with the dimple in it. So, like a Glock, you're going to want to pull back slightly on the slide, only now you want to hit the, the deactivation switch with something pointy. I'm sure you heard the click. Now you can push the takedown button, slide the lever down, take the slide off. The upper is pretty standard fare, so I'm not going to mess with that, especially considering the time it took me to get the chassis out in the dry run. <laughs> it's certainly not the easiest, but you know, if they did it like SIG, they'd be getting sued by Steyr. Maybe. I don't know. Anyway, I'm gonna stop talking about that. I had uh, good results with one of these mini Phillips head screwdrivers because the Phillips head allows it to give something to cradle the tip of the spring in. As you know, you gotta lift this spring over that, over the groove in that bar. So let's see if I can do this in a timely manner and on camera. Let's see which way I get this screwdriver facing. I'm also gonna try to do it without cursing. So if I succeed, well, then again, I kind of curse a lot anyway. It's all in good fun though. I didn't feel like going out to the car and getting my pick set, and I don't really don't know if it would help that much more. Woosa, I can say that, right? Ooh. I saw movement. Sorry, I'm getting off camera here, but I'm trying to see what I'm doing. which I do best with my optical receptors. That's a conehead reference. Ah, there we go. Trying to cradle the tip of the spring. Hey, I still got it. Snap down, but okay, I've got it moved out of the way. Now I'm going to grab my makeshift punch, which is not a punch, obviously. Try to support the frames. Keep it from moving. Give it a push. And let me see where I'm at with that groove. The groove seems to be out of the way. Let me give it another good push for good measure. And it's not going, so I'm going to set the spring down and try to push it since the groove should be out of the way. Straight on. There we go. Pen is out. Easy street from here, guys, until we get to the reassembly that spring is going to drop what's important whenever you go to put it back together is to make sure that spring is on the back side first time I tried reassembly I had it flopped on the inside toward the magwell and I didn't know what was going on so don't do that I make these mistakes so you don't have to oh, let me make sure that pin doesn't roll too far away by the way the pin only goes in one way See, it's got the groove on one side, and it steps down on the other. So it's a different diameter, only goes in one way. You need to have the side with the groove in it to the left, so it can cradle that spring. 
now you can turn the takedown lever up. I'm getting out of focus, which I'm sure has got to be annoying. I've also found that if you push down on the slide rails, it, it makes taking the takedown lever easier, which, you know, it's not a big chore. Every little bit helps, though. Now you can... I oh, almost forgot. you got to press this striker deactivator again, and I'm going to use my little pokey thing this time. It pretty much pops out of place, and you should be able to squeeze the uh, chassis and pull it on up. It's kind of a shame you got to squeeze the chassis, but I guess they didn't feel like tack welding it on the back here. It's another thing on reassembly. I'm going to make sure this uh, the rod that goes through with the spring in it is lined up with this hole. I thought it was interesting that this is all one piece, just stamped steel. You see as I go around to the front, that's all one piece of steel. I guess I could have caught the light a little bit better. I think it's good stuff though. I mean, I like to think they know what they're doing. They've been around long enough, so they don't have any excuses. See, this spring you want to make sure stays on the back side on reassembly, so that way the frame will push it up a little bit once you put the chassis back down in the frame. While it's apart, I'm going to add a little bit of Lucas, because if it's Lucas, it works, you know. I actually believe that. I'm not paid by Lucas or anything, but they make good stuff. I've used probably all of their auto automotive products. So let me oil this baby down, and then I'm going to get right back to it. All right, she's all oiled up and ready to go. I do realize that's a little bit overboard for, you know, some spaces, but it's not even broke in yet, and I'm going to bring it back home and clean it tomorrow. I'm cheating a bit because I am holding the uh, frame assembly together. You see it's wanting to separate, but like I said, you got to line that pin up on the back side, and I don't feel like getting it lined up while not being able to look directly at it, so I decided to fidget around with it. Anyway, let's cut to the chase. Drops are pretty simple. Nose side first, unlike the SIG that goes tail side first. I am <laughs> using a combination of looking through the uh, viewfinder and looking through my eyeballs. Dang, was that that easy this time? Okay, anyway. Shut the hell up and finish this thing up. I'm going to go ahead and put the takedown lever in the front. In theory, I'm, it's going to help line everything up a little bit better. Go ahead and drop it like it's supposed to be, though. Notice there's a flat side on the takedown lever. I just believe it to be a little bit tighter with the flat side to the front because I'm not going to get into that. I'm going to get into trying to put this pin back in because. Like I say, it's not the easiest to change. I got a dog here on there, or two. Modular chassis setup, but it is unique and it's definitely Italian. So I'm going to start the uh, small end. You can see the spring getting pressed by it. Grab my screwdriver so that I might grab the end of the spring. Actually, I don't even have to do that in this case. Let me get back on frame for a moment. Push up on the spring, get it on the step. Now, I've got it on the smaller diameter step of the pin. I found last time I could just push in. There it is. And I do have to push down on the striker to push it in. Yeah, it's not actually a striker, I don't believe, but uh, there it is. That's back in, oiled up. I haven't got the rails, so let me go ahead and. Put a drop or two on the rails or a little streak. It'll spread out the rest of the way. I do like the full length rails on this thing. Sigs don't have that and you could attribute that to more accuracy. But you know, I'm not gonna get into firearm design theory right now. I'm just gonna put this back together and be happy that I was able to do it for you guys on camera. Lever popped up, it's good to go.
chamber is empty. Function test, test seems to go all right. I have a snap cap handy, but it's been struck so many times, I don't think it would tell you much by looking at it. A little oily, but I'm going to wipe her down, and she's ready to hit the range tomorrow. Might try to get some footage. If I do, I probably won't be shooting as well as I normally do because I'll be concentrating on getting footage, but I'm going to enjoy it either way. But if you get any video, I'll be sure to uh, share it with you guys. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it and found it informative. Maybe you learned a little trick or two that you didn't hear elsewhere. That would be awesome. So, I guess I'll cut it off at that. See you guys next time. Take care. Bye-bye then. Let me just make a short addition. I promise I'll try to keep it short. I don't know if you guys recognize the different uh, background. It's actually a piece of foam I picked up from my local fabric store. Picked up a nice Pelican case. I believe it was used for some kind of small Cummings turbo diesel parts. And I'll be using this foam to fill it because the pick and, pick and pluck foam is all right. But, you know, if you want that custom fit and finish, you got to get in there with a knife and do it yourself. And that's the plan for this stuff here. Looks like I got, I should have enough to cover it. I got a spot of oil or two on it already, but I ain't sweating it. If it comes out nice enough, I might even try to get some uh, glue and put some fabric over it. If you guys uh, care to see something like that, be sure to like and uh, comment down below. And I'll keep you guys posted if I do feel so inclined. Alright, thanks again. Be good.